Hello everyone, this is Robin Threadbear. Welcome back to Alpha Protocol. I didn't really go into depth about the game system, but that's because we're just about to start the tutorial. This is a restricted area. The vending machines are down the hall and to the right. Alan Parker, I'm here for espionage orientation, so let's not waste time. You're Thornton, Westridge's candidate for the job. I thought I said let's not waste time. Any other facts you want to spill, or can we get to it? Very well. So, orientation. You are familiar with the premise of an obstacle course, I assume? Yes. Excellent. And I don't need to explain. Up the ladder is the training area. The first test is navigating through the environment without being detected. Following that, you'll be facing live challenges against the agents here. Anything else I should know about running this course? Yes. I suggest you do it quickly. And talking gives your position away. What's the deal with the security panel? It secures the entrance. If you're as capable as Westridge says, then you should have no trouble hacking it and gaining access to the course. Clock's ticking. Great. All right, so full disclosure, this is not my first run through the course. It's not that I couldn't have done it with a good enough score. The course begins now. Hack the door in front of you to gain access to the course. But I wanted to do it as perfectly as I could. You know, just to show things off. Always check your surroundings for cameras. We can't have you appearing on the nightly news. Mind the gap. The key to stealth is timing. Pay attention to camera movements, then exploit their blind spots. So if it looks like I know what I'm doing, that's because I've done it a few times before. Alright, now we've got the live challenges. You see the triangles have shown back up. The one on the left there is on the other side of the wall. But the other guy might prove to be a problem. See, the thing about the stealth challenge is that the reason I kept failing was because I tried to do it as fast as possible. Well, time is not the best means of getting a high score. You want to remain undetected. That is the key part of this challenge. Also, this is real fun. Taking in the view. Yeah, well, I doubt the view is what's making you hesitate. I've unlocked the security door. Come back to the control room for your evaluation. Your score is based on several factors. Sorting the numbers now. And you can see here, I still didn't get a completely perfect score. Outstanding. Well above average. Especially for a trainee. Okay. You want to run it again? No, I don't think so. Very well, I'll log the results. Westridge can complete your evaluation once you finish the other tests. That it? If that's the worst you can throw at me, then it shouldn't be hard to prove myself. Of course, not enough of a challenge for you? No. Then I have an assignment for you. This one won't be logged. What? You mean like a covert training op? Aren't you guys carrying orientation too far? Nothing of that alpha protocol is orientation, Agent Thornton, despite the semantics. The penalty for getting caught, however, won't be a poor score. It'll be detention. So, are you up for it or not? Well, I'm up for it. Let me see what you need. You want me to head back to the medical center? Why? What's the file name? Jacob. Why use this algorithm to encrypt it? That's like putting an electric fence around a dog kennel. Your metaphor notwithstanding, the file contains the location of this facility, something people would pay dearly to have, thus the encryption. Not only would this be a much more practical use of your talents, but I think you'll be curious to see where in the world you're going to be sent. Any other intel I should be aware of? Nothing you can't find out on your own. We aren't even having this conversation right now, and the clock is running. Got it. All right, full disclosure again, this is not my first run of this either. I might have seen checkpoint loaded rather than checkpoint saved. Yeah, that's the giveaway. Are you waiting for clearance? 
Go ahead. Oh. So, silent running. So for a stealth-based character, silent running isn't all that useful, because you'll be in stealth gear which is quiet on its own. But this is combat gear we're in right now. So until I can change out of it, silent running is actually pretty useful. And by the way, I may not have gotten a perfect score, but by getting over a hundred, you unlock this bonus objective, what you're seeing right now. This is the most complicated one of the three, but uh, it's also potentially the most rewarding. Now, I would sneak right up to him, but in combat gear he'd probably hear me. I mean, even just those couple steps. He heard that anyway. And yes, I did miss the ammunition to the right there. I screwed this up so many times I didn't even bother exploring by the time I got this far. Sorry if I sound a little off, by the way. I'm recovering from a cold. At least I got that much. Now to make it all the way back. Luckily there is a sprinting button. Should save us a second or two. And there is one more person we have to worry about. I got caught by that guy on my second to last try of this. And yep, now well, wait goodbye to the briefcase. Won't be seeing that ever again. And luckily the guard on the other side there doesn't care a whit what we're doing. Did you do as I asked? Got the data, no problem. I'll download it from your PDA. Were you seen? Not that I know of. Yeah, well then that'll have to be sufficient. Now that you have this file, huh? Anything you can tell me about my real assignment? You go into the Middle East to recover stolen prototype missile technology. Your probability of success is in the lower 20th percentile. Wait, I'm going to the Middle East? I've downloaded intel onto your PDA. That should prove useful when you reach your destination. That intel you gave me, why wouldn't I have that already if I'm going on the mission? That is a good question, Agent. I would find an answer to it when you can. If not here, then in Saudi Arabia. I don't like the sound of that. Good. So when am I shipping out? After you finish your orientation with Westridge, it's customary for him to outline in a slow and plodding way his expectations for you. Then he'll send you to fetch like a good dog. I'm not sure I like that comparison. Yeah, well, none of us do, Agent. But such is the nature of the kennel you've been put in. Was there anything else? What do you actually do here? My primary role is intelligence analysis, but at times I serve as a handler during sensitive missions. So you've been on a lot of Alpha Protocol Ops? Key ones, yes. I was involved in the events leading up to your assignment, in fact. How? I took on the role of a contractor, an accountant. Money is one of the easiest ways to track events. It often leaves the best fingerprints. So you're a spy? Mm, I'm an observer. I rarely take action. But the smallest event, if analyzed incorrectly or acted on improperly, could have great repercussions. And that's where I come in. To interpret events. 
like butterfly wings sparking a tornado, that kind of thing? Spare me the butterfly cliché. Guerrilla actions, nuclear tests, exposing a corrupt politician, a rise in grain prices, and... Yes, the downing of an airliner in the Middle East. All of these things have the potential to create larger catastrophes. Okay. Controlling the repercussions of these events, getting agents the information they need to put fires out before they rage out of control, that is my job. So when I'm in the field, my orders come from you or another analyst. My job is what? To listen? Yes. It's a numbers game. But decisions must be made quickly. If the decisions are solely reactive or passive, well, then you operate at a disadvantage. So sometimes you create events. For political equilibrium, yes, at times. At other times, to give America an economic advantage. I thought we were mostly mission-driven. We are. But even you will see the effect that even seemingly minor interactions have on the structure of a mission. Carry the logic one step up, and it shouldn't be hard for you to grasp. You like working here? My responsibilities don't account for that, nor should they. You know, I actually thought you were the janitor when I arrived. That would either be an insult or an excellent deduction. I'm guessing the former. I was actually just trying to make conversation. But why would that be an excellent deduction? Because, Agent, Alpha Protocol can only maintain plausible deniability as long as no one knows we exist. That means continually cleaning and scouring data, masking our communication lines, and protecting our global positioning. I understand. That must be a full-time task, and an important one. Agreed. Even Westridge would say I hold the most important post in the facility. So, in short, yes, I clean up after others, and if necessary, I'm the one tasked with shutting this program down. Shutting it down? Turning off the lights, putting up the chairs, locking the door. What does that mean, exactly? This place cannot be found. If Alpha Protocol is compromised, any evidence of the program must be deleted. But... What happens to the... I mean, is there an escape route, or... What happens? What do you mean, Agent? Be specific. I dislike dancing around an issue if one exists. What happens to the program? Seems like a waste of resources. You are correct. If ended, it starts again under a different name. With a new agenda. You sound like you've done this before. If I have, it's classified. Or perhaps I'm joking. Are we done here, Agent? I think I've answered all your questions. Some of them, yeah. The others can wait. So, Alan likes to talk. But that's pretty much his only chance to, so we'll cut him some slack. Hello? Anybody shooting in here? Agent Thornton. Hello. Hey. Hey, you're the one I spoke to when I woke up in the medical bay. <laughs> Glad that wasn't a hallucination. It may have been. Do you remember my name? Or do I need to write it down for you? You're Mina Tang, the weapons specialist. You've heard of me already. I like to know the names of everyone around here who carries firearms, other than the guards. It's a quirk I have. I see. But let's get down to the task at hand. I'm here to run you through the weapons training and test your accuracy. Uh, any parameters to this test, and what firearms do you supply? Assault rifle, pistol, submachine guns, the works. Shotgun? That too. For the close quarter exercise. Any special ammo? You're thorough. It's why I was recruited, and it's also why I'm alive today. Now, are we using special ammo or not? Not for this exercise. Fine. We ready? Just head through the door to the firing range and I'll keep in contact with you over the earpiece. Head over to the table, get your weapons, and we can begin. The standard field agent package includes a pistol, SMG, shotgun, and assault rifle. Each has its strengths and weaknesses. And you can only carry two at once. Let's start with the pistol. Equip the pistol, then aim down range and take some shots at the target. So the pistol has this circular reticle that shrinks to the dot the longer you hold it over a target, assuming that it's within range. Good aim. Now, steady your aim for a few seconds, then fire. 
Precision shots can take down a target quickly. Yeah, thanks. I kind of already did that. Now, let's move on to the submachine gun. Now let's empty the clip. Let you get a feel for the recoil. Now take cover. For some reason you get to dual wield these things. Still using cover, take some shots at the target. Accuracy's terrible when firing blind, but it can get the job done, eventually. Now try popping out and focusing your aim. You can use cover to your advantage here. Now, this target reticle does not shrink with time. Instead, what you see is a combat multiplier at the bottom there. I've unlocked the door to the tactical range on your right. Let's see how you do against some moving targets. The damage increases the more targets you hit in a short amount of time, without reloading. Now, with the pistol, you'll want to be patient and attack when targets get close. Now, once again, like the stealth challenge, the weapons challenge is more about scoring critical hits Good. than about keeping the time low. So it is okay to just stop and aim on those targets rather than wasting him as soon as you as he pops up. Holding the trigger steady and firing can knock down even heavily armored targets. Now, something interesting about the shotgun is that the critical attack actually increases even while you're walking. I believe this is the only weapon where that's true. Now for your submachine guns. If you're trapped in close quarters with multiple opponents, the SMGs can help clear the room quickly. Not subtle or quiet, but... Oh, right. And that's enough. For long range encounters, the assault rifle's the key. It's accurate, powerful. Just be sure to line up your shots carefully. The assault rifle is a bit different from the pistol because the reticle will shrink even when you're not focused on a target. On the other hand, It'll grow every time you move. Watch for attackers from above. They may be out of reach, but not rifle range. Whether that means move your rifle or move your body. That's it. Take the ladder, head up and back. All done. I think I did pretty well. This was my first run through, unlike with the stealth challenge. logging the results now. All right. Is somebody out on the course? Darcy. He's trying to beat your time. Darcy? Who the hell is that? Our tech instructor. Very insecure. If he does, then I'll just run the course again. I don't give up that easily. I gathered that. But he's supposed to be stationed in the tech area, right? Why is he in here instead of at his post? As soon as he knew you were talking to me, Mike, he was in here in a second. In case he saw you as a challenge for my affections. It's like a cage match with you boys. I guess I'll need a wrestling name for the upcoming match then. I'll see if I can think of something. No need. Thornton is already vaguely Norse and heavy handed enough for most people. How did I do on the course? Good enough. That's one of the most impressive scores I've seen. With that in mind, you did so well, I'm wondering if you'd be up for something more challenging. A bonus round. This course is a joke. Did you scale it down for that jackass? I could walk the rest of the way. Jackass? Now I'm hurting. So will Darcy. 
Did I mention we don't use live rounds? They still sting, though. I'm listening. Go in there, and if you can hit Darcy where it counts, that'd be worth a recommendation in my report. And worth some rep with Westridge. And it'd be earned. Sure, sounds good. Any preference on weapon? These targets are pretty easy for someone to hit. Thornton could have aced this thing blind. Give me the gun. Let's start with the pistol again. Don't worry. We're using tranquilizer rounds, so you won't be doing any lasting harm to your targets. Besides, turnabout is fair play. They drugged you, so... Out of all the special challenges, this is pretty much the easiest. All you have to do is wait for him to show up and start firing. Aim the shot. That wasn't as much fun as I'd hoped. And you're done. Alright, you're all done. Head on back. You also get yourself a free silencer, which is always helpful. I don't know if there is supposed to be something extra, but there isn't. Alright, let's see here. Well done. Critical hit. I don't think I have to worry about Darcy coming by again. Anything else I can do? No, Agent Thornton. Mission accomplished. If you haven't seen Westridge yet, you may want to pay him a visit after all the training is done. You've certainly aced this exercise. All right. Now let's go see Darcy in the gadget range. About time you got here. Guess you were too busy laughing it up from the weapons range, huh? You got me good there. You entered the range and gave the challenge, Darcy. I'm not gonna back down from something like that. I hope that's not gonna be a problem. Not at all, Mikey. You're absolutely right. We're both professionals. Good. Then you'll start by calling me Mike or Agent Thornton. But if you call me Mikey again, I'll knock you right on your professional ass. All right, Mikey. Uh, Mike? No harm meant. I'm glad you finally showed up. Thought you might have gotten lost on the way here. Or we're too busy beating up some more guards. This isn't the only orientation I have to take, Agent. I arrived as quickly as I could. Yeah, sure. Oh, by the way, not a good idea. Hitting the guards, I mean. The ones here have a lot of time on their hands, and that means a lot of time to hold grudges. I'll keep that in mind, but I wasn't expecting to be drugged and attacked. A good agent's ready for anything, Mikey. But enough chit-chat. We got a lot of work ahead of us. Well, you do. I'm mostly here as an observer. I'll be doing your evaluation, too. What's that out there? A used car lot? A target range for you. For me, more like a shooting gallery. Head out the door there and we'll get started. All right, then. Open the locker and equip yourself. If you use them all, just come back and grab some more. I like how he keeps calling you Mikey. All right, everyone's favorite. Grenades. Let's see that arm of yours. Go on, start chucking them. They're concussion rounds, so don't be skittish. They sting, not kill. They'll use Mikey regardless. But if you use the veteran dialogue, then it's basically an insult. Alright, now how about something more challenging? Try a ricochet to hit the target behind the wall. Lob it behind the target and use the wall for a hook shot. You can see they've kindly shown you the trajectory that you're going to throw in. Now, try and get one through the window. Still, the way they bounce usually isn't quite the way it seems. Now for some fireworks. Try and chuck one beneath the truck and take out the gas tank. See that electronic lock there? Use your EMP grenade to shut it down. It can save you time in the field. Oh. Right, that puts it in mine mode. So, I've actually got to just chuck this over. I keep forgetting because the first sabotage ability is skip minigame with EMP grenade. It's 
Shut down. No more lock. All right, see that locker there? Let me guess. You want me to place one on the door? Oh, gadget challenge has started. Nice. And just in time. Hey, Guess some of the other guards will be pulling double shifts for a while. Oh. Going that way. You know those guards you beat up when you got out of medical? Yeah, well, they're gonna be joining us in a second. You've got a head start, so if I were you, I'd set an ambush. You just start running. Me, I'd use the mines. That's what they're for. Let's get my first shot at. Hey, Thor. Wait up. I just want to talk to you. Yep. Sneaky bastard. This one down. Come on, guys. Don't be scared. Have a chance. So, Mikey, you did all right on the basic run. I did outstanding on the basic run. You know, that performance wasn't half bad. Almost as good as my record. How about we up the stakes? Take this to the big leagues. What do you have in mind? All right, me and the guards, who you already met when you woke up, pooled our petty cash. And we'd like to make you a little bet. All right. I'm listening. It's a rematch. On our terms. It's simple. Disable all the alarms and escape the area in the time provided. And you take on the winnings. If you lose, you'll owe us. Got it? Sounds good to me. Just head into the range and we'll get to it, Mikey. All right, then. Tell your team to get ready. So here we are. Rematch and the guards, but on their terms. So listen up. There's alarms hidden all over the course. All you need to do is shut them down. But the guards are gonna try and reset them. Every time an alarm goes off, another squad's coming in. And they all want a shot at you, trust me. Alarm goes off enough times, and you're gonna get trampled. But you have the technology to beat them. So let's see even the odds, if you can. Oh. So you notice I got the radio mimic there. That'll immediately shut off an alarm, but they were able to turn it back on immediately as well. Huh. Well, if it worked, I'm not complaining. Now that all the guards have been dealt with for now, let's just set a few more mines everywhere. Just making sure that, you know, no one gets a chance to set an alarm at one of these stations here. Maybe by the entrances too. Now the radio mimic has a very long cooldown time. And there's the alarm again. Oh whatever. Yeah, keep shooting at me. Hey, See if that know. works. Getting sick of hearing them anyway. Thought they might have you for a second. Guess I was wrong. All right, head on up, and I'll call someone in to clean up the course and the bodies. Pretty thorough. In a real mess of things, in a good way. That's all I need. See you in the field, Darcy. If you say so, Mike. I'm getting all of that done. Got me $20,000. And a second level. We haven't even started the game yet. I think that should do. Now, let's go see Westridge about this whole going and actually doing something. But first he's going to put us through the dialogue tutorial. So, 
sit back and relax because this is gonna take a while. You guys must have spent a fortune on the TVs in this place. You all done? You tell me. Now you're learning. I have to admit I was worried whether we'd be able to keep you here after you woke up in medical. You gave our staff a run for its money. I gave it my best and so did they. Fair enough. It'll be a good excuse to up the morning drills around here. Looks like you did well on the tech portion of the test. Very well. Past Darcy's bitching, there's some real compliments in here if you look at the numbers. Mina's report on your weapon skill was impressive. In fact, I think you outperformed many other guards. And it's your first day. She's a good teacher. She is. And she has a good eye for potential. I'll let her know your opinion. And here's a surprise. A positive evaluation from Parker. On the number side as usual. But he actually took the time to write a sentence. He did? Uh... What was the sentence? You may have been right about this one, Westridge. For Parker, that's high praise. Assuming you don't let us down, Mike. Looks like that's it for the physical evaluation. Now for the hard part. Tell me why you're here. Not everyone gets chosen for this line of work, but you volunteered. This one is actually pretty important. I want to serve my country. And you think by being assigned here is the best way to do that? Give me a mission and I'll prove it. What makes you think you're ready? Because I tell you, we get a lot of recruits in here, and you're not convincing me. I think I'd like to cut through this bullshit and get to the mission. In good time. Even vets like yourself could benefit by what I'm about to tell you. Beyond the guns, tech, and sneaking around in the dark, there's one last part of this job that nobody else here quite gets. I'm listening. Good. Because listening is a large part of it. The way you talk to people, your attitude. That's what we're going to discuss now. I'm not sure I understand. Is there something wrong with how I deal with people? No, believe it or not, you're not here because you're a people person. You're here because your psych profile says you're skilled at manipulating others. Was that a compliment? You'll see. The way you project yourself definitely affects what people think of you, and your reputation with them. So, this is a win friends and influence people lecture? Hardly. Turning a friend into an enemy and vice versa. Well, both can have their positives. Sometimes you want to piss someone off so they can't think straight. Other times you want to build a strong rapport with someone and talk your way out of a bad situation. All depends on your objective. This goes for your handlers as well. We're going to be sending you into a lot of dangerous places. And your only backup is going to be who you're talking to on your headset. How you treat them is going to have an effect on the success of your mission. So if I piss them off, I'm screwed? No. A handler that likes you too much and puts emotions before the mission can be just as dangerous as one who resents you. This is a long way of telling me that I should just act the way I want. I don't have time to chat when there's work to be done, and it sounds like it'll just leave me vulnerable if I go down the wrong road. No, again, there are no bad choices, just results. Over time, folks may hear about you and your attitude before they meet you. They may have a preconceived notion of how you're going to treat them, which can affect their reaction. Well, maybe they should take the time to know the real me. If only. Time something no one seems to be able to spare, especially during a conversation. Although that can be a plus. If I need a breather to assess the situation, right? The clock doesn't stop when you're speaking to someone. So if you need to get your second win before a fight, making small talk can buy you time. But if I'm running on adrenaline, won't chatting take me off my guard? It can. So if you need to get to the point, act instead of fight. For example, if you don't think I have any more to teach you, then you could just say, I'm done with this. I wouldn't think any less of you. You seem to have the basics down. And if they're a target, why talk to them at all? Sometimes it is better if you shoot first. Still approaching someone to talk to them can allow you to get the drop on them if you get close enough to strike. Use it if you have to, if the conversation isn't going your way. Assuming there's even a way you want the conversation to go. Like if I wanted to seduce someone? I mean, not like I have trouble with that or anything. If that's what you want to do, pay attention to the clues in your environment. Sometimes people will have advice, and intel can help. But there's another way. Read much? Everything I can get my hands on, or download, or take from scribbled bloody confessions. There's a host of information out there through dossiers, email, and other documents that represent total research others have collected on a target, organization, or operation. 
And what does that get me, exactly? Sometimes you'll spot obvious triggers. People who don't respond well to smart asses like me. Others who respect loyalty, duty, a professional approach. Others who don't have time for bullshit and like it when you get to the point. But dossiers just don't contain psych information. They'll usually have combat information on your target as well. What side they favor, any past injuries, common weapons or tactics they use. Some of it blunt, some of it subtle. But if push comes to shove, it can give you an edge in combat. The more you've done your homework, the more vulnerable they'll be. So when the guns come out, the dossier can come into play. Have you read mine? Several times. You have dossiers on everyone here? Yep, if you can dig them up. You might learn a few things. Sometimes reading a dossier will give you more options when dealing with others. A few facts to bring up to shake secrets loose. What about you? You should already know what makes me happy, Mike. And what pisses me off. How do I know when I have the go-ahead to start accessing files? After meeting a target or hearing their name referenced by someone else, you should have a target ID. Then hop onto the database and start doing your homework. You can usually unlock their basic information at that point. Let's start with a simple one. al Saman. That should be familiar to you. The terrorist group. Yes, you can research groups as well as people. It doesn't carry the same benefits, but it can provide useful intel in the field. Talking to people about others is a good way to help gain dossier information. Sometimes people will have information on someone that can unlock a brand new thread in your computer search. Okay, so I've suffered through your interrogation. and know how to give one if need be. Am I ready or not? We'll see. Meet me in the command center, and I can give you a proper mission briefing. Good, because I'm sick of this room. Trust me, Mike. If it was up to me, you'd never see this interrogation cell again. Recognize him? That Sheikh Ali Shaheed, the voice of Al Samad. They say he was responsible for shooting down that airliner in the Middle East. Yeah, he got his hands on some prototype Halbeck technology. A missile with a multi stage targeting system called Jacob's Ladder. That airliner was his first target. Specs and shadiness of this whole thing aside, how did Shaheed get his hands on that missile? Missiles. He's got more. We stole them from Halbeck, and we need them back before he gets any more trigger-happy. Then we want you to kill him. About time I'm getting tired of this place. All right, then. Pack your gear. You're heading to Saudi Arabia. Not coming with me? I'll be there in spirit. And on video and radio when needed, Agent. And I just got here. Oh, well. I'm gonna miss this place. I doubt it. I'll contact you when you reach Saudi Arabia. And the mission, such as it was, is over. Lots of bonus objectives cleared here. Lots of people tranquilized, electrocuted, knocked out. Nobody killed, of course, although all the weapons got used. I'll see you in the Middle East.